PostScript is a new computer language. It was invented and developed by John Warnock of Adobe Systems. And at first, it is very important that it is a general purpose computer language, which means you can do anything with PostScript that you can do with COBOL or BASIC or Pascal or anything similar to that. But PostScript very much excels at being able to show words and pictures together as a graphic language. Now, if you want to, you can use nothing but a word processor to uh, create PostScript images. And uh, this, of course, gives you a tremendous amount of power. Now, I'm very honest, but we kind of adopted a guy called Morale, who's our pousse de resistance here. And this is kind of another example. As you can see, we're combining, in this fairly simple example, text and graphics and some outstanding grays and some fancy curve tracing and stuff. Now, while this could be done with a scanner, in this particular case, we once again have just used a word processor and the PostScript language to do this. My background is kind of an engineering background. I've done a lot of technical illustrations and stuff. Here is a typical example of a drawing in which we have mixed some technical details and some figures and some line art. Now, traditionally, this is, has been very, very hard to do because one set of people would have to paste in all of the messages. Another set of people would actually do the line art and combine the whole thing. But with PostScript, it draws no distinction between words and graphics, so it can mix in any combination. And a drawing like this, with some experience, can, uh, can be done in 10 to 15 minutes very easily. This is a logo. And you might ask, is this text or is this graphics? And the answer is it's both, in that we've got, as obviously, our letters, but they're very fancy letters. Uh, B did this because she's a weaver, and she gets into a lot of different uh, fibers and stuff. And this is the Cotton Council's particular logo. But the thing is, once you create this as a postscript routine, you can make it as large or as small as you want to. You can twist it. You can distort it. You can literally tie knots in it. And most important, as it gets bigger, it gets smoother compared to some of the other graphics packages and other systems where as things get bigger, you get what's called a Hershey bar effect where it starts chunking and going into different blocks and stuff. This is a type of engineering drawing called isometric. And it's primarily of interest to the mechanical drawing type people. And I'm sure you've all seen these as assembly instructions for indecipherable Japanese on a bicycle and stuff. Isometric has the advantage that we can measure in any direction and we can still scale, yet we get an approximation to three-dimensional drawings here. We can do isometric lettering very easily, and not just this nice clean font here, but we can take any font at all, and we'll see some more examples later, and we can draw it in isometric. These lines here, these, are these dotted lines and stuff, this is all fully automatic and all handled by the PostScript language. This is a product of an associate called Marcia Swampfelder, and she normally only tends to show up on April Fool's issues. And she's come up with this product that everybody needs. It's a poison ivy in a spray can. And it saves having to go out in the woods or anything, just in the convenience of your own home, or if you have a used car dealer or something, just spray it on and you're all set. Uh, if we look a little closer here, we find that we actually have lettering that is physically wrapped around an isometric cylinder. Now, that gets expensive than just about any other way. But with PostScript, it's just very, very easy to take text. And as you can see, fancy text. And we haven't cheated on lettering or anything. This is a 20th century school book here. And this is a Zapf Chancellery here. And as you can see, we've got these two mixed together and put together. And the beauty of PostScript is we have the power to take all these words and we can distort them. We can make them any size we want. We can place them anywhere we want and do just about anything with it. How much does PostScript cost? Usually PostScript is built into a printer, such as this Apple laser writer. And we'll look later on to see how the thing works and stuff. But basically, the paper goes in here, and we have a little thing called a toner cartridge. We'll see a little more on reloading those in just a minute. And the drum goes once around and transfers the toner to the paper. And then the paper will either, either come out uh, this little door back here, if you like it straight through, or else it will 
flip it around and turn it up here. And the reason you turn it upside down is to get it right reading if you had a, a, a word processor that prints things in order rather than backwards. This particular machine is in the $3,500 class at the present time. Now, that sounds like a lot of money. But there are PostScript uh, imitations and implementations available for as little as $200. There are uh, typesetting machines in the high end in the eighty to hundred thousand dollar range that all use the same language, and so you can start simple and little, and automatically the files you've already got can be moved over. So what can you do with it locally? Here's some examples of what you could do at a say a yard sale or a swap meet or something. You can do custom business letterheads, and I'll show you how to do these in full color in just a minute here. You can do bumper stickers. You can do badges using the badge a minute process or any one of several others. You can do business cards. And these can be done on demand. And a person can come up to you and say, well, I need, some, I need a dozen business cards right now. And you can deliver to them a totally custom business card. And one of the things that I found that works real good with this is to uh, put maps on business cards. Now, if you go to a printer and try to ask him to put a map on a business card, that's real expensive. But there's just so many people could say, well, here's how to get to our house on a business card map. Uh, we also have here a decal. If you look at the decal fairly closely, we see it's backwards. Uh, this is intended to go on a peel and stick uh, background for, uh, it goes on the inside of a door on a business. And it's a little more vandal resistant because the vandal has to go inside rather than out. So these are some of the immediate and low cost things that you can do with it. Students and beginning students in my postgraduate class, which work with raw PostScript on their choice of Apple or IBM or Vax or Macintosh, are able to, uh, like last night, they were all doing resumes and uh, Mother's Day cards and all sorts of things like this. So the sort of, there's so many things you can do with PostScript that you wouldn't have thought of doing before because you have so much power. This is another example of curve tracing. It's a digitized signature. And with a simple process involving a safety pin and about 20 minutes work and a little bit of practice, you can digitize your signature so that you can automatically sign any kind of routine letters. And this is particularly important if you've got a direct mail business or if you're sending out product literature requests and stuff like that. Naturally, you would not want to do this on a legal document. But all we've done here is we've told it to curve trace and for those of you following some of the stuff I've got in Computer Shopper magazine, we've all even got the ability to simulate pen skips on this thing. So we can make it, make it look very accurate and very good if we so choose to do so. Again, I've come at this from a technical standpoint. This is an example of an electronic schematic. It's a type of circuit that we call an analog circuit, which means it uses more traditional electronic parts like resistors and capacitors and zener diodes and thermistors and stuff like that. But again, we've combined text and graphics. And if you look at this close up, you'll find that these graphic images are exceptionally well done. And uh, if you look on my uh, hardware hacker column in radio electronics, Everything you see there was done camera ready out of the PostScript language. There was never any need for any artwork or any paste up or anything beyond that. Here's another example of a electronic uh, type schematic. What we've got here, this is an example of a digital schematic. You've all seen the little bugs inside your computers and stuff. So what we got the schematic, and automatically, once you teach PostScript once how to draw one of these, it will automatically draw it from then on. And you can put these all in a, uh, what's called a dictionary, and you can just call it up by name, and it will automatically plop this onto a page. So far, everything we've seen has been in black and white. And this looks like just a simple technical illustration, but if we tilt it or move it a little bit, we should be seeing some blue glare on it. And what this is, is this a process called Croy Color? And we've got an imitation Croy Color machine over here that we'll look at it a little bit. But what is really nice about Croy Color, first it works beautifully with PostScript, but you can take any Xerox image from any Xerox machine, and you can make it virtually any of about 65 colors you want. You can laminate with it for such things as um, menu covers or uh, book covers or menus or stuff like that. You can also uh, 
simply use it to um, put a gloss finish on. You can make them gold and silver. This particular one is called a metallic blue and works pretty well. Certificates and awards are a natural for this sort of thing because we can come along here and we can put a big scroll border. This looks a lot better, by the way, on parchment. But we've got this nice scroll border on here. We've got fancy lettering up here. And if you look real close, the A and the W and the A here are done what's called kerning, which means we've kind of pulled them in so that they, the visual balance looks a little better. Again, the uh, whole wagon cover and stuff was just done with a few cubic splines. We've got some fine gray. We even have a, uh, an attempt at calligraphy here. There are several PostScript calligraphic fonts. And what these calligraphic fonts let you do is simply appear to be a complete, uh, actually do a signature. And you also have the ability, you don't have to print these up ahead of time. That you can actually have your awards, you can actually go ahead and do things. And then as the awards are announced, or as the winners come out in real time, you can generate these. Now, I don't have a, do we have a parchment here anywhere or not? No. Okay, we'll find a little piece of parchment for you here in a little bit. But uh, basically, what kind of papers can you run through this? The, some of the papers we can run through the machine. The first and best is just your cheapest Xerox paper, which you get at a place called Price Club or another warehouse store. It's about $17 uh, for 10 reams, which is super cheap. Over and above that, depending on your part of the country, there's a store chain called Paper Plus. Now, out here in Arizona, and we'll be passing around a list here, and uh, we'll give you the main numbers for Paper Plus and the handout that goes with this video as well. But this is a nationwide chain that sells all kinds of magic papers, such as parchments and bumper sticker materials and fluorescent and transparent and peel and stick. And there's all kinds of different things. I guess this is kind of an example of parchment. This is a deckle edge thing that, uh, that they made a Mother's Day card out of it from last, uh, last night's class. But at any rate, you can get all these special papers and they will run through here. Now, there are a few papers that you should not run through. Uh, one of these is the uh, floppy disk envelope material, that uh, plastic Tyvek that melts, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to run acetate through it because, unless it's well supported because acetate also will melt. But there's a type of transparency material which is called mylar. Uh, its generic name is polyester. And either mylar or polyester will allow you to, uh, to make uh, transparencies for overhead transparencies or stick-on signs or whatever you want like that.